The option menu on the venue has a lot of information. Some of it you'll rarely use, so we'll try to hit the high points, and then we'll also come back to it as we're doing other segments on the venue. We'll start with the first tab, which is the system tab. This tab lets you set up your show, uh, sets up your inputs and outputs, and all that good stuff. In order to change anything, you'll need to make sure your console is in config mode. To do that, double click where it says show in the bottom right hand corner, and you'll go into config mode. There's also a button on the console that you can press. Here you can choose edit, and it lets you edit your input channels, FX returns, and graphic EQs. So you can choose 32, 48, 64, or 96 inputs. Uh, you can choose your effects returns, uh, which are just that. They're useful for reverb and delay. Uh, you can also patch things like CD players and video and that kind of stuff to them as well. Uh, they do have a limited EQ, so you wouldn't want to use them for anything that you need lots of EQ on. And then graphic EQs, if you want some of those for your outputs, uh, this is where you tell it you need those. If you have two stage racks, then you'll need to enable that here. If not, then you don't need to worry about it. Below that, in the input section, you tell the console if you want it to look at the stage rack for audio or at the HDX card for audio, which would be your Pro Tools recording setup if you have one. Here we're looking at the HDX setup so that we can play tracks back for training. If you have a second HDX option, you can choose that here as well. In the top right, you have your main buses assignments. You can either do left, right, plus mono, or an LCR setup. This depends on your PA, so you'll set that up accordingly. Uh, below that, you have your bus configuration, where you get to choose how many auxes and subgroups and what type you want. So here we have eight auxes and eight stereo groups. Um, you might want mono groups, or you might want eight variable groups. Now, variable groups are basically the same as auxes. Um, they work identical, just a different name. So that's useful for when you're using this desk as a monitor console and you need more stereo mixes for the band. If you make any changes on this page, you'll need to hit the apply button in the bottom right hand corner. And this applies the changes and also restarts the console. The next tab is the buses tab. The buses tab lets you change the way auxes operate and it also changes your solo and monitor operations as well as your panning. If you want to make changes to your auxes, select edit and then you can make changes to each individual aux. You can make the entire aux pre-EQ, pre-mute, or pre-fader. If you're using stereo auxes, you can make the aux send follow the main channel's pan by selecting follow channel pan. Once you make your changes, hit apply. In the bottom left, you have your solo and monitor operations window. Here you can choose PFL, stereo AFL, or solo in place. These are options you might want to change uh, before you start a show if you want to use PFL during a show, but maybe you want to use solo in place during rehearsal. Um, you also have your trim level, and you also have delay. The delay is very useful if you're using headphones or even near fields at front of house. Um, it keeps you from having the nice echo in your headphones. So that's very useful. You also have an aux's follow AFL checkbox. This means that when you hit AFL on an aux, that aux is selected. This is very useful for running monitors because it would put that monitor mix on the faders for you. You have an AFL follows auxes button. This means that when you select the aux, it solos it. You also have an auto cancel option. This means that if you have one input soloed and you solo another input, it will cancel the solo on the first input so that you're only listening to the second input. You also have an input priority option. This means that if you have an output soloed, and then you solo an input, the input takes priority, and you no longer hear that output solo. Now, as soon as you're not soloing an input, you can hear the output again. The last option you have is mix to monitors. This simply sends the main left-right mix to your monitor outputs, which is either your headphones or your near fields. You also have a panning section, which lets you set your center divergence, and that's only if you have an LCR setup, and that just simply is how much of the signal goes to the center. You also have your stereo group panning operation option. Uh, this means that you can either have it in simple mode where all of the groups are either stereo or mono, or you can have expert mode where some of the groups are stereo and some of the groups are mono. The first option under the pickoffs tab is input strip fader pickoff point. Now this determines if your direct outs are pre or post fader. You can also change this 
on each individual channel if you want to, and we'll talk about that later. Below that, you have matrix and PQ sources. Now, you can choose if you want your auxes, groups, and left, right, and mono buses to go to your matrixes and PQs pre or post fader. Most of the time, you're going to want these to be post fader, unless you're using the PQs for your musician's mix, in which case you'll probably want them to be pre fader so that your moves don't affect the musician's mix. In the top right, you have delay compensation, which compensates for plugins, which create latency because of the processing involved. You can turn this all off turn it only on for the mix or for the mix and the inserts. Below that you have master insert points. This determines where your plugins will be inserted on your outputs. You can choose pre-fader or post-fader. Most of the time you'll want it to be pre-fader. If not, when you push the fader up it'll change your gain structure for your compressors or any other uh, gain sensitive type of plugin you might have. So most of the time pre-fader is the way to go on this. The next tab is snapshots. On the Snapshots tab, you have several useful options. The first one is your default crossfade time. Here, you can set your default crossfade time to whatever you prefer. If you like longer crossfades on all of your snapshots, you can go ahead and set it here so that every time you create a snapshot, you're not having to change your default time. You also have an option to center the last recalled snapshot. If you do this, it simply centers that snapshot in your view. To the right, you have your presetting. This determines what gets recalled when you have the preamp scoped in your snapshots. You can scope your high pass filter, your gain, pad, and phase switches, and phantom power. So it's important to remember this because if you're trying to scope your high pass, you might think that's part of the EQ, but in fact, it's part of the preamp. So remember that. On the snapshots page, you can either scope aux monitors or effects monitors. And this setup tells the venue which monitors are auxes and which ones are for effects. You can also tell it to scope your aux pre and post states if you want to. Below that, you have your MTC or MIDI timecode set up. You can have it off, you can have it read MIDI timecode, or generate MIDI timecode. Uh, if it's reading MIDI timecode, it's coming from an external MIDI device, um, or if you're generating, it would be generating it out the MIDI port. You can also select your frame rate, and your MIDI time code start time if you're generating. In the bottom right, you have your MIDI section. You can select what MIDI channel your snapshots send and receive on. On the miscellaneous tab, you have several options. The first one is your oscillator. You can choose what type of output you want from your oscillator, if you want a specific frequency, or if you want pink noise or white noise. You can also set your level and turn it on and off here. Below that, you have your system clock which simply sets the time and date and your time zone. And you can tell it if you want a 12 hour or 24 hour clock. And you can also tell it to display the time in the status area, which will be on the bottom right of the screen. In the top right, you have your talkback level. This just determines how loud the talkback is. And we'll talk about assigning the talkback a little later. You also have your dim level. This is so that when you press the talkback, it dims all of your outputs and you tell it how much to dim the outputs in this setting. Below this you have your two track settings. You have a two track input on the front of house rack and this turns that on and tells it which one to listen to. Below that you have your channel delay setting. This simply determines what units will display on the channel in the delay section. You can choose milliseconds, feet, meters, or samples. Below that is your tap tempo setting. You can choose your units, which are beats per minutes or milliseconds. And you can also set your tempo manually and turn it on and off. We'll also talk about setting this up in the events section in a few minutes. And the last option is your mouse setting. You can choose your pointer speed and you can switch your buttons. Next, we have the interaction tab. The first part of this is assigning channel selection. Here, you can decide if you want the console to select the channel if you touch the fader or if you solo the fader. You also have targeting changes view mode, which just means that when you target the channel, it changes the view mode. Below this, you have your input safe switches. On each channel, you have a safe button at the top of the channel strip. This simply tells the console what you want that safe button to do. You can choose act as automation safe, act as a solo safe, or act as a bank safe. The bank safe is cool because it keeps that fader on top even if you change banks. Below this, you have your lights section, and this simply controls the board lights and the LED lights on the console. 
You also have a knob for that on the console. In the top right section, you have your metering options. You have RMS ballistics or peak ballistics. RMS ballistics simply meters an average volume of that input or output, and peak ballistics shows you all the volume changes, shows you the peaks and the valleys. You have your input clip margin, which is simply when do you want all the LEDs to turn red? Do you want it to turn red at zero or before it clips? You also have the same option for your outputs. Below that, you have your clip hold time, so that if you clip something and the LEDs all turn red, how long do you want them to stay red? You probably want it to stay red for a few seconds so that it grabs your attention if you happen to be looking away. You also have your peak hold time, and this is just the input or output peak level, not necessarily your clip level. Below this, you have your Ethernet control settings. You can enable it, set a password, and set up your specific IP information using the edit button. Below this, you have your display settings. You have standing or seated. You also have a show channel strip value while moving fader option. This means that when you're moving the fader, the value will be displayed on the scribble strip just above the fader. You also have show VCA contribution. This means that on the input view, it shows you a little red fader showing the effect of the VCA on the input channel. In the bottom right, you have control surface options. You can link and unlink your sidecar's faders and encoders. You can also do this by holding on the bank button on the control surface for a few seconds until it indicates that it has been changed on the screen. The next tab is the devices tab. The devices tab just shows you all the hardware you have hooked up, if it's working and if it's not working. You can also reset parts of your system by right clicking on it and choosing reset. You can also see how much DSP you're using for inputs, outputs, and plugins and see how much you have free. The next tab is the plugins tab. It simply lets you install plugins. In the top left, you choose where you want to install the plugins from, select the plugin, and then choose install. The last tab is the events tab. The events tab lets you set up any number of customized events. It can be very useful for any number of things. I'll show you a couple quick ones and then you can get creative on your own. The first event that we have is for foot switch one. You can set your trigger which is that foot switch one is closed and when that happens the action is that it taps the tempo. So this just simply means that foot switch one is now my tap tempo. So when I tap it, it sets the tempo. Foot switch two is set to clear my solos. You also have function buttons on the console and you can set them up here. You can have fun here and experiment with all the different triggers and actions. 